I am always interested in other people and in how people think about other people. So what I try to do in photography is to play with these prejudices. I don't want to say to people you are wrong or your idea about other people is wrong. I also don't want to say you're right, but I just want people to think about it. My name is Rob Hornstra. I'm a photographer, but I consider myself as a storyteller, documentary maker, slow journalist. It's not so much about photography, but I use this medium to tell stories. I graduated in 2004 from the Art Academy and I'm working now for seven years independent on mostly long-term projects. I'm from Holland, so here we are in uh, Utrecht. And uh, from here I'm going out to other countries sometimes. Russia, Iceland, hope some more in the future, but not too many. I just don't feel that I'm the type of person who will travel everywhere for one month just to see a country, to meet the people over there and to get a few shots or something like it. I want to go deeper and it has its disadvantages because now uh, many people call me the Russia photographer. I'm convinced that I'm not a Russia photographer, but I'm just focusing for maybe 10 or 15 years on Russia. So. At the end of my life, people will see that I also did other things. At least I hope that I have time left for that. This is maybe nice to see because it's like the oldest series. This is like my graduation project. I graduated in 2004 with a book, Communism and Cowgirls. For one month I went to Russia. And I focused particularly on the younger generation. Uh, the first generation who grew up after the fall of communism. The West became extremely popular, like Coca-Cola and uh, Rammstein was extremely popular. I didn't only photograph them, but I also made photos of the places they're living in, but also, for example, of their grandparents. This, this contrast was especially fascinating to me. When I finished the Art Academy, uh, I was quite sure that uh, with the work I made in Russia, I wanted to make a book. And of course I couldn't find a publisher. And then I started to investigate how much it would cost to print this book, an offset print, a real book. And it was seven and a half thousand euro for 250 copies. And I was completely shocked. Um, but on the other hand, I was working uh, as a bartender and I explained this to my colleagues. And then this colleague immediately said like, I want to buy a copy in advance. So here you have 30 euro and Maybe you can sell some more copies in advance and maybe it's possible. And uh, it worked. The book sold out within three, four months. So that's good. Got the money back and I printed my first book. And as a result of this, uh, at a certain point, I was asked for a commission in Iceland. And I did a project over there. Also interested, especially by the young generation doing nothing in these villages. Then this uh, Iceland book, I started a new pre-sale and uh, it sold out within three days instead of three weeks or four weeks. So I did it again in 2008, my uh, third book, 101 Billionaires. And um, what happened was that it sold out within a few hours, this pre-sale. At that moment, Russia had 101 billionaires. And what I showed actually was the 99% of the rest of the country. Well, every morning I have to ship some books, the orders which come in, and it's not that difficult. That's it actually. This is for today, so we will bring it to the post office now. Okay. The difficulty is, of course, when you're a self-publicist, that you have to organize everything by yourself. So you start with finding a designer, you have to work with writers, with a translator, you have to find a budget, you have to find money, organize the, the payments of course, and uh, when you finish it, the book is finally there. Then you also have to ship all the books. So it's a lot of work. Uh, on the other hand, I believe that uh, if you publish the books yourself, you are completely free in whatever you want to do with the book. 
the only thing I care about is that I want to tell my story. I also have to sell this book, but it's really secondary. I mean, I want to make this book and I believe that if I tell this story in a perfect way that people will be interested. That's actually my only idea behind it. In 2008, right at the moment that I published 101 Billionaires, I was approached by a writer Arnold van Brugge. I was already working with him also for 101 Billionaires. And he told me about the uh, Olympic Winter Games in Sochi. It was announced in 2007. And Arnold tried to convince me to do a long-term project about the region around Sochi. Uh, the goal of this project is to document it for five years and to make an atlas of the region in words and images. Sochi is it's over here, quite far to the west and to the south, of course. And actually what you see over here is the whole Soviet Union, but uh, partly the, the lighter brown is Russia. And Sochi is near the Black Sea, so it's a holiday resort. And from Sochi you go straight up into the mountains, the Caucasus Mountains, into the more or less troubled republics, uh, Chechnya, Dagestan, Ingushetia. It borders Georgia, it borders Abkhazia, also conflict zone, where a lot of things go on right now. So I just arrived last night in Sochi from Utrecht, Amsterdam, Moscow, Sochi. We're now on the 15th floor of uh, Hotel Shimchusina, which means the Pearl. It's a hotel built in the end of the 90s, end of the Soviet times. And I think actually that the view you have over here from uh, Shimkyushina is one of the most brilliant views uh, in Sochi. Took already many photos actually. What we for example want to do is to show what kind of place Sochi is. And Sochi is really a an, an, an tourist resort, but maybe things are a little bit different than you expect. And this is also a kind of aim or goal for me within photography, to tell stories which make people think and maybe they start to reconsider their prejudice. What we try to do uh, is to document this region to give a good view, also because you can be sure that around these Olympic Games there will be a big facade from Russia to, to show how great and fantastic everything is. We are <laughs> right now at the area where they built the Olympic stadiums. What we see over here uh, is really a journalistic picture, I think, uh, because it's uh, like the new stadiums and the old houses all in one shot. I don't like this kind of pictures, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what the journalist likes. It explains actually the situation, but I do not really like it for my work. It, uh, it tells you too much. It's like exactly what it is. It's not, it doesn't leave anything to your imagination. Slow journalism is a little bit a strange description of what we are doing. Actually this term is invented I think by someone in the Netherlands and I believe slow journalism is similar to documentary. And I believe actually that uh, the, the big difference is that journalism is focusing on what is happening and slow journalism is more why these things are happening. Rob, очень приятно. Rob. Vodka, vodka. Ah, Wow. What's this? This food is really amazing. Um, yeah, what you see over here is the, will be the main stadium. On the 1st of April uh, this year, 2011, we started the third year of the Sochi project. So uh, at a certain point, I came up with the idea. We were sitting in a restaurant and there was a singer starting his uh, show again, which in a restaurant in Sochi always means that you cannot talk with each other anymore. 
And this is actually a really typical Russian cultural thing, but even more typical for Sochi. So what I will do uh, in, the, in the upcoming days in Sochi is investigate if it can be uh, a good subject for, uh, for a new publication. Last night we went to uh, cafe restaurant Yuk, which means south. And it looked like a very interesting place, beautiful background. Some interesting details, like a van which was standing on the right and uh, there was a nice toilet sign uh, near the stage. So there must, be, there must be a good picture in it. Yeah, I was happy with it. So when we started this project we decided we need money and we cannot uh, rely on magazines and newspapers. Just the story everybody is telling. So we wanted to do something different and we looked to the US and what we saw over there was kickstarter.com and um, spot.us. Both crowdfunding sites and they were very uh, interesting to us because we didn't know this in the Netherlands and we were almost sure that we didn't see it in Europe yet. So we tried to copy this uh, model from the US and many people were interested in it and started donating. Not enough to do what we want to do but it's really big amount of money and we hope that we can make it uh, for five years. In 2009 uh, we started by making our first trip and we came to the idea to make a publication about sanatoriums in Sochi. Uh, sanatoriums are extremely important and Russians like it a lot. We decided to stay there for um, almost two weeks and to do exactly what the Russians also do. And you have to go in the mineral bath, massage, and you get like an electric loaded clay treatment and those kind of things. Very interesting to see for us. And then we heard that because of the Olympic Games, they want to change them into four or five star hotels. And that's the reason why we decided to make the first publications about sanatoriums, because that's, our only, that's the only way we can preserve this history. Here are only a few boxes left with the last really big book, Empty Land, or really big, it's thick. Uh, we were already working at that time for four years in the neighboring uh, country, Abkhazia, which is really neighboring uh, the Olympic stadiums within five kilometers, so it's walking distance. So the second year we made a book completely about Abkhazia. And it's a very complicated story over there. Actually, this country is isolated because it's not recognized by any country in the world. Until 2008, Russia decided to recognize Abkhazia as an independent country. Um, but it's an extremely complicated story, so in the end it also became an extremely big book. It's a big historical political document about this region. We are in a hurry tonight because I actually want to do five restaurants. That's uh, quite a lot. But they're very close. We're now in the center of Sochi and uh, hope to do five. So we have to hurry. What we realized immediately is that we cannot make such a big document as we did in Abkhazia within a few months. I mean, we worked on this for four years. So our idea came to do a more simple subject uh, we cannot do uh, such a big book, but we can do these Sochi singers, the lounge singers. That will be probably our new publication in 2011. Um, I'm making a series about musicians in restaurants. And uh, the most beautiful is if I have a big interior, well, I will have it over here. And if you sing like you do what you also normal do, so don't pay too much attention on me. Sometimes uh, look in the camera. Yes, yes, I work. And then finally, it will be a brilliant picture. Okay? Huh? Spasiba. And in um, 2013, we will probably make our end book, a really big book, uh, what we call the Atlas about the region of Sochi. And this will be combined with a really big exhibition in uh, many, yeah, we hope many places in uh, Europe around the Olympic Games.
От всей души мы всегда очень рады приветствовать наши мечты. Всегда добро пожаловать. Спасибо. Олимпиада 2014 год. Всегда добро пожаловать. Well, I think I will be here earlier, before the Olympics. But actually what we do, we also try to present projects in different ways. Um, we don't have to think about these newspapers and magazines anymore. We don't have to think about all traditional ways to tell a story, especially because I'm a self-publisher and there are many self-publishers. You don't have to think in a way the documentary makers did it 20 years ago. We can do actually anything because nobody tells us, nobody tells us what to do actually, so we can do anything and that's really good about these times.